Here's something I would like to call King Caspian's Paradox. Please do not call this Kermode's Paradox, you respectable scientists. Please call this King Caspian's Paradox when you write it up, because that is what I am declaring, if this is a new scientific hypothesis, okay, see, because at the very least, that that's what I'm trying to bring in is, you know, what my mentor C.S. Lewis called regenerate science in the abolition of man. Okay, I'm trying to see, first of all, if there is actually a place for not religion versus science. See, that's, that's the part of the paradox that pisses me off, is anytime you get into, you know, quote-unquote, religion versus science, anytime you get into the, the uh, you know, the atheistic scientist's assertion that you know, one of these days we'll be able to prove, quote, quote, prove that all religions are equally untrue. See, I, I have a problem with that. I will grant this whole, you know, ultimate pantheism argument, if you like, in, in that supposedly if there are, like, any number of universes, then there can be any number of gods. Okay, I'll grant all of that. I'm not claiming to be enough of a of a scientist to dispute that one. But here is my problem. Okay, will you ad, at least admit that Arthur C. Clarke was a scientist? Okay, at, as an opening premise, Arthur C. Clarke was a scientist not a religionist. Okay, now, now I, I tend to draw a specific line in my ministry. See, one of the things, I'm not really interested in, quote-unquote, proving that Christianity is true or that Christianity is the one true faith. I assume that. All right? I assume that. That's why I am a Christian. That's why I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? But this is what I mean by taking it for an a priori assumption. One of the other things that I believe about the resolution of conflict is, you know, basically the resolution of conflict in any ethical system, any ethical system whatsoever, doesn't matter, atheistic, religious, what have you. But one of the things I believe about the resolution of conflict is that in order to do good science, you eventually have to agree on you know, effectively a, a neutral territory between arguments. <sighs> okay, I, uh, this is a first approximation. Anyway, back, back to reconciling C.S. Lewis with Clark's Law. See, the problem I have with you know, for example, the assertion that, that, like, there is no such thing as a Christian scientist, or, uh, you know, there is no such thing as a Christian scientist. Ne never mind, you know, let's not get into the whole Christian science label, ba Mary Baker Eddy. I'm not describing a religion. I'm describing the arrogance of the proposition that, that, you know, here's the problem I have with atheists in general, and, and you know, atheist Darwinism as a as a general philosophy among scientists in particular, is that I consider it arrogant to say that 
that in effect since all religion is delusional then it follows that no religionist can ever be a scientist okay and okay so anyway what I want to propose is King Caspian's paradox please call it King Caspian's paradox when you write it up okay after I'm gone that's what I want it named I'm on record as saying this and I'm tracking it in real time King Caspian's paradox then is that what the you know what the Christians are afraid of about defining okay about defining God as a delusion is the argument has been made by you know uh, whether it's Christopher Hitchens Richard Dawkins I, I don't know I don't know I, I documented it elsewhere on site just found it this morning okay just found it this morning you know there's a problem with killing God okay it's a basic scientific principle that just because you know a particular phenomenon has never happened before doesn't necessarily mean that it won't happen in the future and so what what religionists what what Christians in particular are afraid of about this whole notion of, of you know like classing all religion as equally delusional it's not just the arrogance okay it's not just the 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 disrespect for the opening premises of any given religion okay my first attempt is to prove that this is bad science according to Clark's law okay Arthur C Clark stated that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic okay what I believe the Blessed St. Jack C.S. Lewis offered into that argument is that You know, basically, he he argued that that um, unless we come up with a with a different version of science, unless unless we come up with a version of science that that like respects the ways of God, then there then basically there's a profound danger that we that we may you know for example lose the death lose the ability to define evil because because you know basically he, he he was postulating that a set of moral absolutes not necessarily a Christian set of moral absolutes okay because different people hold different religious traditions okay what I believe the experimental science that C.S. Lewis was calling for was you know basically let's just let's just lump all religion together in in one great big lump okay for for now we will ignore the contradiction see he, he was about he, he was about you know basically defining the problem of evil you know defining the problem of like what what is evil okay and and, and the thing is 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 basically <laughs> One of, one of his primary postulates is that a belief in certain moral absolutes whatever they are doesn't matter if they're Christians or whatever 
the problem with believing that there are no moral absolutes is basically you lose the definition, whether it is a human definition or a divine definition, you lose the definition of what is good and what is evil. Okay, so I believe the minimalist experiment he was calling for was let you know let's take all the established religions in the world and see where they have enough commonalities. Okay, that that can we come up with you know for example a, a better mathematical definition for like what what is you know what is good versus evil all right now now the implications for clark's law okay what i'm on about about clark's law is that you know by disrespecting the idea that there can be any such thing as quote unquote a true religious position by by taking as a thesis statement that all religions everywhere are untrue okay see religion is bound up with human magic okay religion is bound up with human ma I'll get into the difference between religion and spirituality later best beloved but but the conclusions that I'm coming to in this real-time experiment is that religion is bound up with magic the problem with doing away with magic is that you're not disrespecting just religion you're disrespecting Clark's law okay any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic okay so you know, maybe, presumably, if there's no such thing as an absolute good or an absolute evil, then you know the the boundaries of the system are are so fluid that, how, that like how can you function if everything is neutral territory, if everything is an absolutely gray area? That that's manifest nonsense. Okay, that's manifest nonsense. The problem with defining God as a delusion okay I, I'm attempting to prove that there there is basically a mathematical problem with defining God as, as a delusion okay the the apocalypse that the Christians are afraid of begins from assumptions like you know not not just well all the atheists are going to take over the world that that's you know that's part and parcel of what we believe is that eventually all the atheists are going to take over the world okay my response is not on my watch god damn it not on my watch they don't okay so basically, I'm taking full generational responsibility. See, see what I can do to to prevent the apocalypse fever, let alone the real apocalypse. Okay, and that's from a religious premise. Okay, the the argument that well, you know, the historical argument that well, you know, atheists don't kill people because of of you know what you delusionally call the the faith or the religion of atheism okay that that makes us more moral than you people okay i call bullshit on all that i call bullshit on all that because because it's like you know as a practicing christian if if my god is a delusion then, pre, then pretty soon my there's going to come some definition inside society that says my personal existence because I believe in hate because I believe in this delusion you know because I believe that that like <laughs> you know certain types of evil are divinely inspired see that that's that's a that's a, <laughs> that's a an argument that I hadn't seen before and it's you know I, I 
I hate having to say this, but, uh, you know, as a fallible human being, I almost have to grant that point. Okay, I almost have to grant that point, except that if, <coughs> if religion is untrue, then the, you know, then, then basically what is, what was known as a divine sanction, if it came from an illusory God, okay, if it came from a God who was not there, see, in, in my position, if it came from a God who was there, then it was by definition moral. Okay, you, you, I understand, atheists, that you don't agree with that. Okay, but you can't use that as why, as, as why you disagree, <coughs> disagree that there is such a thing as a God. Because, you know, basically this was simply the Hebrew tribe exercising their religion. Okay, ex exercising their exercising the terms of their magic, okay, to assume that this being who presumably wasn't there, see, how can they have done evil, how can they have done evil in either case, okay, because you know, if the Judeo-Christian, if the Hebrew God is the God who was there, then you're wrong. Okay? Because God is, by definition, the entity that gets to define the nature of good, therefore you cannot call good evil. Okay? <laughs> but if God wasn't there and the Hebrews were trying, were trying to um, okay if God wasn't there and, and the Hebrews were trying to perform a a you know a pro survival magic okay then then by your own arguments they were attempting to discover a technology Uh, okay, okay, this, this, mm, all right, this is breaking down, this is breaking down, so I, I'm going to leave it right there, but, but okay, there, there's a problem with, with, you know, doing away with religion, is that, that religion, you know, religion defines magic, and any sufficiently technology is you know, any, any sufficiently advanced technology is also indistinguishable from magic. So if you eliminate all, all of magic, you're effectively eliminating a belief that there is anything we don't know. Okay, you know, basically, that, that, that's part of the whole, you know, man is equal to God delusion, let alone the, the, the delusion about whether there is a God. Okay, let's suppose, it, uh, let's suppose that I am delusional about there being a God, okay? The, the postulate of Christianity is if I'm delusion about, if I'm in delusion about there being a God, then, then poof, I die dead, and it's meaningless. To me, it's it's all temporary and it's all meaningless. If, if, you know, there is no such prize as eternal life. Okay, the, you know that's one of the postulates of Christianity. There is no such prize as eternal life. If you if you cannot get to eternal life by you know whatever code of conduct, then it's all pointless. I grant that. Okay, I grant that, but there is an ethical problem with taking every Christian or every Hindu or every Muslim or even every, you know, 
every worshiper of Uga Booga, the great god of South Africa, and saying that they are a stupid person. Okay, and, and because I'm getting so angry about this, because I'm getting so strident about this, I know it's time to stop because I'm not getting to the clarity that I want. Okay, I'm, you know, I grant that I'm not being civil here. I, I'm being passionate, I'm not being civil, but I'm trying to be civil. I'm try, trying to arrive at something that, that you know, let, let's, let's at least arrive at a definition for, like, you know, what all the religions in the world were trying to say about what is good and what is evil. Okay, let's at least make that attempt. That's the age that I'm in. Okay, and, and the law of unintended consequences says... Heaven defend me, but the law of unintended consequences says that I may actually be helping to bring on the real apocalypse by my actions. Okay? That's one of the things I'm afraid of is, you know, God help me that there should be no blood on my hands because of what I as a flawed human being have brought into existence in this world. <sighs> okay. So, all right, all right, all right. Mm. Okay, title of the video, King Caspian's Paradox. Uh, June 24th, 2014. I, uh, 14, I'm out of here.